Thank you for tuning in to Something Good is About to Happen. I'm Dr. Sugar Trask of Scar Free Ministries, a ministry of healing, restoration, deliverance, and the prophetic. Also the founder of Something Good is About to Happen. And I want to thank each and every one of you that tune in every Thursday evening at 7.30. You know you can watch uh, Something Good is About to Happen every Thursday night at 10.30. Saturday mornings at 11 and Sunday afternoons at 4.30 Central Standard Time on www.kbntv.tv. But well, I have a lineup. I have movie actors and actresses. I have uh, prophetic people on the show this evening. But we want to get started with a happy new year. And we have Apostle Cedric Pitts of Solid Rock full gospel that is going to open us up with a song to start this new year out. Let's welcome Apostle Cedric Pitt. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can and seems like it's never enough and what do you say when your friends turn away and you're alone, all alone? Tell me what do you give when you've given your all and seems like you can make it through? Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how can you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? And how can you smile while your heart has been broken and filled with pain, filled with pain? Tell me, what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like you can't make it through? Well, child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. Yes, after you've done all you can. You just stand and endure. Be not entangled in the bondage again. You just stand and be sure for God has a purpose. Yes, God has a plan. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can and seems like you can't make it through. You just stand when there's none left to do. You just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. You just stand. That was Apostle Cedric Pitts and that's what we have to do. We have to continue to stand. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter what it seems like. We have to stand because at the end of the day, it's only God's word that is going to hold us, that's going to keep us, that's going to deliver us and set us free. Well, I am with some Hollywood actors and actresses, and I am so excited. Until I read their bios and their resumes, I had no idea to the depth that I am in the company of professional actors and actresses. 
But I want to introduce you to the, producer, uh, the producer and the writer and the director, Joan Montreal. She's a mother of five. She was born in uh, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. She's an award-winning filmmaker. She's a writer. She's a director, a producer, an author, and a film editor. And her, uh, uh, let's see what it is. She's featured films nationwide in stores and online and the author of three published books, Let Love Rule. She's been in media for over 20 years and the CEO of two thriving organizations, Wisdom Productions and Brilliant Women in Film. Let us welcome Joan Montreal. I am so thankful and so honored. I mean, I am so honored to have you and your cast on. Thank you and for us. I know you're busy. I know you have a lot to do. You have rehearsals. Her movie, uh, uh, what is it? Beyond the Vowels will be out January 24th, 2019, and then it will be showing again February 28th. Uh, 2019. So let me ask you, let love rule. How did that, how was that birth? Uh, well, it's birth out of love <laughs> because I am a Christian. And so um, every, every movie that I have written and every book that I have wrote, the message is the same. Let love rule. Um, the books are delivered from destructions, uh, destruction, beyond the vows and the unexpected. So beyond the vows movie is an adaptation of my book, the latest book. And um, the message uh, stands as is, is always love, hope, faith, and belief. And that's what this movie is centered around. Amen. While you have the mic, I'm going to go ahead and have you to introduce the cast. Mm -hmm. So then we can get that on the air as well. Who is this that we're... Okay, first we have to our right would be Angel, would be Dottie. Dottie plays um, uh, the concerned friend. She's the millennial. And she's uh, the friend that uh, keeps it down to earth. Uh, she's uh, realistic, and she's a logic person, and she tries to speak with her friend, Brittany, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in the film, Karen, about her uh, ways. Um, and this is Karen. She's the lead role uh, in Beyond the Vows. She plays a devoted wife to her husband, Don. Um, Don has spent his entire couple of years, months, trying to win Karen back after an adulterous affair happened. And he does a good job of doing that. Hey Amen. This is so exciting. So when you started writing, did you really know that you were going to go into films or were you just being an author? Um, actually, I started off writing uh, stage plays for 10 years. Um, in New Orleans, Louisiana, and so when I came to Texas as a result of Hurricane Katrina, um, I started writing then. So I wrote my first short film, which was uh, Consequences, and then, you know, God just allowed me to continue to write. And so when people say, you all over the place, what are you doing? I, I, the message is the same, love, hope, belief, and faith. So, um, and, and so I'm enjoying it. I love um, the fact that the Lord is um, still into marriages. He's still blessing us. Amen. He's still showing Amen. us favor. And I'm probably the least among the brethren to still be doing Christian films because there are a lot of films out there, but not too many Christian filmmakers that are, that are making Christian films. All right, Don. How did your role in the film connect with your own personal life? Well, I've been married 10 years now. And um, getting into acting was tough for me because I had to, had to distance myself from being a husband sometimes to play these roles. But playing this role down in the film, it was like, all right, I finally get to play a husband. And then I found out what he did, and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was different for me because I, I ain't even going to knock on wood. I've never cheated on my wife. Um, I've never thought about cheating on my wife. Um, Ten years to this day, I love my wife. Every day I wake up, I thank God for her. Well, hey, and, hey, um, hey. and, you know, it was, it was playing, playing this role as Don, it, it let me see some, some sides of my marriage that maybe I wasn't aware to with some things that I thought Don was doing that I was like, hmm, I see myself doing that sometimes. So it was kind of therapeutic for me to kind of play that role and then go, 
Mm. All right. Charles need to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> now, without giving away anything, what's your favorite line of dialogue? Okay. Um, to set the scene, we were having a discussion at the table, um, and everyone was going in on me. But uh, my wife right here, <laughs> she took up for me to my mother and said, uh, you know, the reason why Don didn't leave me and go to somebody else is because I take care of him, and I'm good to him, and no one else is. How beautiful. Yeah. So I, I, I actually, I connected with that because I, I felt that in my own, in my own marriage. Amen. So it, it, it resonated with me. So that was something I... Amen. Solar, why did you want to be involved in this particular production? Oh, wow. Um, well, at the time, I was um, searching for... Um, a film to be a part of, and I was just looking for something that gravitated me toward um, love. And when I found out that this was a story about marriage and about a relationship and about um, what it would take to mend brokenness in a relationship, mm. that's really what drew me to it. Um, I resonated with it in my own life, mm -hmm. and there were some, some things missing that still needed to be worked out, and I felt like being a part of the project would kind of help me explore those things in a safe space. Awesome. So what was the biggest challenge um, in the, the role that you're playing? The biggest challenge? The biggest challenge <laughs> was seeing Karen, my character. Mm -hmm and her insecurities and then having to face my own. Mm. And it was hard to face myself. And it was uncomfortable. And sometimes I didn't want to. <laughs> um, but did you not find it to be healing and therapeutic? I did, I did. Um, I think there was moments where I thought that um, I had healed from some of the things in this movie. Mm -hmm. And then when I was faced with it, I realized, oh, we still have some work to do. And that was, it was, it was, it was bittersweet because I knew I could work it out. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I knew it was just gonna, you know, take time. <laughs> well, amen, amen. Dottie? Yes. What will the audience be thinking about in the car as they drive home after this show? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say how close it hits to home. Um, if it's not their particular life, they know someone who has dealt with this situation. I mean, so how close it hits to home and then you know, realizing that that could be this, anybody they know themselves, they could be in this situation, you know, and, but also how to come out of it. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah. Edgar, what's going to surprise people about the show? Um, it's a very serious movie, but it's very funny. It's, it's, at times there are some, there's some lightheartedness. Um, it's a difficult issue, but it, it does, you know, we, Joan, you know, tackle the issue through mm -hmm. the through the story, through the writing, and that um, you know, there's there's always the other side. When you get to the other side of the, when you get through it, yes. you know, there's light at the end of the. There's the always the, the blessing <laughs> on the other side, Miss Joan. What was challenging about bringing the script to life in this particular uh, movie? Um, I think the challenging um, issues were for me was dealing with the emotions. Uh, revisiting how I felt in the pain and the agony and the hurt and the betrayal um, and having to go back and revisit that was hard but the, t the story couldn't be uh, told until I was healed so I didn't finish the story until everything was cleaned up so I always say you can write a story it's, well, it's best for you to write a story after you have healed and you'll know you're healed if you can tell a story without crying 
and without being um, emotional about it. So this story here, I am very excited. So it's no longer bittersweet for me. I'm very excited because I know that many people are dealing with this issue. You know, uh, I believe that every couple has went beyond the vow. So it may not be adultery, but it may be physical abuse. It may be alcohol abuse. It's somehow, some way, there was a traumatic experience happened in your marriage, and you went back. And that's going beyond the vows mm -hmm. that, you, that you took. So how much of this movie is you? Um, a good 80%. <laughs> A good 80%. Uh, my plea is that um, when we're in the marriage and we're having uh, issues, don't look outside of the marriage. Look inside the marriage. Because a lot of times when you look outside and you're looking for that emotional support with someone else, you in most couples end up experiencing a child born out of adultery. And so that's a whole other thing we have to deal with. Another movie. And, uh, another, another movie. Well, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You might see some of that in this movie, but you uh -huh. never know. You never know. Who should not come to see this show? Anyone that is bitter, mm. resentful, closed-minded. Um, anyone that is that does not want to, uh, or is not ready to be healed. Because this movie heals you. This movie is a healing process. It takes you through the trash, and then we clean it up and we come back on top, and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, like Angel said. And so, um, so if you're bitter and you're not open and you don't want to go there, because everyone can't stomach this type of message. Okay. But those who can and those who are in this situa situation, they're going to appreciate it. Amen. Yeah. Okay. And where do you see your production company in five years? Um, uh, a few more feature films, um, a couple uh, short films. Um, and also um, having movies into libraries. Well, I do have one, which is Walk by Fate in the library. So that's, I want to continue doing well, that. Amen. Um, amen. And it's an educational film about sickle cell disease. And then I want to uh, go into the schools and actually have some uh, life skill uh, films that can help uh, them in life. Because I don't think they even have the classes anymore dealing with life skills. And so I figure if we put it in a movie, we'll be able to digest it better. And what skills it, would these be? Um, mo morals, okay. value, okay. your worth, drugs. Um, a lot of times I think, you know, the kids are being taught, they're being educated, but they don't understand the consequences of, of doing something wrong, a wrong behavior. So you, you, you enjoy it, but you don't see the end of the wrongdoing that you do. And so our plan is, well, my plan in the future for Wisdom Production is to have um, those type of uh, films that will entitle that. It's almost like a, a series of things that will help them through their, you know, growing up as a teenager, because it's, that's the most hardest time as being a teenager, and I experienced that. So I have something to say about, you know, dealing with uh, situations when you're a teen. Yeah. When will you be having another casting call? How would people be able to look in the camera? How will people be able to contact you? Uh, what is the website? How can mm -hmm. they get tickets? Share about how we can be part of this. Okay, the, web, the website is wisdomproductions.com, but I am going to kind of settle down for a minute. I'm with an organization called uh, Brilliant Women in Film, BWIF, and I have my partners over here, Kenny Nicole and Nicole, and uh, Kelly is one of the extras in the movie, so I want to make sure I give you that acknowledgement. But uh, we're actually going into a series called The Rental, and it's several episodes. And so we'll be casting for that somewhere in May, May or uh, June, something like that. So it's about seven episodes. Now, will that be in Louisiana or will That's that be in Houston? It's going to be in Houston. Well, now, don't, now we'll be there in a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in Houston, in Houston. Okay. One last word. Uh, what will people take away from your character? Um, from Don people will take away that he's vulnerable. And he can be vulnerable. You know, we, he has to put on a persona to uh, not be so much of a macho man, but just be a, he wants to make himself feel like he is the man. Mm -hmm. Then he, as the film progresses, he kind of sees like, okay, I have to grasp on to my wife because we have to do it together. We can't, one of us can't do it for the other one. Amen, amen. Alrighty, and what are they going to take away from your character? 
Um, I believe they'll take away that just because you've gone through heartbreak in your relationship doesn't mean you can't overcome it. Um, I think in this day and age, we're so comfortable with the idea of it's not working out, so I'm just going to move on mm -hmm. to someone else and mm -hmm. see if it can work out with someone else. And then they end up experiencing similar problems because they never really dealt with the core issue um, or the root of the issue. And so I, this movie really just saved me with the message of love and what love is. I was, <laughs> I don't think I really understood what love was until I was a part of this project. Mm -hmm. And I think before I, I reached a place where um, I kind of gave up on love. And I said, you know what, God, you're enough for me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because he gives me so much love, and he saved me from a lot of broken relationships. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever I was going through the process of researching um, my character and understanding what faithfulness is and understanding what forgiveness is and understanding what love is, um, I was able to see the beauty of when you're in a relationship with someone and you have to go through all of these experiences that test that yes. relationship and the beauty of going through it together and growing together in that love. Like the love doesn't always have to be, you know, so perfect, mm -hmm. but the experience of going through that trouble and saying, you know what, we got through it, you know. Um, so now I believe in love. Amen. You know? <laughs> it's out there, you know, and... I'm excited to, to build a relationship with who, whoever God has in store for me. I love it. I love it. Yes. And what will they take away from your character? Um, Dottie. Dottie. Dottie is Karen's best friend. I think they're going to appreciate Dottie's loyalty. Um, Dottie means well. She doesn't give the best advice. But she loves her friend, uh -huh. and she's loyal to her friend, and she's she's down for her friend. Like she, you know, for those that she loves, mm -hmm. you know, she's she's a smart girl. She's just sometimes, you know, over the top and a bit, <laughs> a bit carnal. But you know, she means well. Mm -hmm. She means well. She has good intentions, and she loves her friend. She looks out for her friend. She's loyal. She doesn't like people to mess with the people that she loves mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that's what i think um because you may not agree the audience may not agree with Dottie, but in the end she means well you know mm -hmm. i think we all have a friend like that <laughs> all right miss joan uh we can need it <laughs> again how can we get the tickets okay um actually we have two free tickets to give on february the 28th um that's, that's a, all they have to do is give me their name and their email address, and we'll be able to um, put them down for February 28th. You can go to um, our website, wisdom-productions, and uh, the tickets are $10. They go on sale tomorrow. I believe I'm going to go ahead and do that for $8. <laughs> we have 44 tickets left. So once um, we're sold out, that's it, because that's the second show, so we won't be doing the third show. Or you can catch us in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, we're going to do a show down there as well. But wisdom-production, you can catch us.com. How did you come up with the name Wisdom Productions? Um, well, I, I'm, I, I, am, I, um, I am an ordained minister uh, from Louisiana. Uh -huh. And um, when I started doing stage plays, that was the name I carried over to the film. So, because I, I felt that the, 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 the content that I would be producing would be something dealing with some, being wiser or being smarter or helping, you know, helping someone else out. So that's how I got the name Wisdom Productions. All right. I know someone is watching through Facebook Live. If you can tell me Angel's character's name, type it in the comments. The first two people that come through on Facebook Live, here's your tickets. That way we'll know the first that comes through because it's going to be shown. It's on Facebook Live. 
the first person that can tell me Angel's character's name, you have tickets. The first two people. I think that's real fair. All right. Real quick, we got a few minutes left. What's your next? My next film? Your next in life. Your next. Oh. What's your next? My next in life right now, I'm filming a series called Juke Joint Blues where I play um, an activist, a political activist for the black community. I can see you doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see you doing that. That is that. my next. That's awesome. What's your next? Uh, well, my next is um, I'm still auditioning for projects, but I would really like um, an internship at Nine Stories Productions. Um, I recently just applied, and I went to New York, finally. And um, now I'm just waiting to hear back from a special someone. All right, if somebody needs to get in contact with you that would like to help you do this, look in that camera and let them know how to get in contact with you. Okay, um, well, you can reach me at my email, um, reaching solar. So actually reaching and solar all together at gmail.com. They need to get in contact with you. What's your um, way to get in contact with you? They do need to get in contact with me. You're going to have to go through my agent. I am signed to the Boysen Agency, Patricia Boysen, um, Patty Boysen at, I want to say it's gmail.com, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I have to check on that. But uh, you can Google the, Bo the, Boysen, the Boysen Agency and you'll see my picture. What's your next? Uh, my next is just to continue auditioning. Um, I'm working on a pilot right now and shooting in Dallas, Texas. So we're doing the groundwork for that and just keep auditioning. Somebody needs to get in contact with you. <laughs> Look in the camera there and share your information. Uh, they can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. It's just my name, Angel Henson Smith, H-E-N-S-O-N-S-M-I-T-H. All righty. Closing words, Ms. Jones? Um, yes. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for welcoming. This is such a welcoming experience. And we thank you for that. I want to thank the cast members um, for doing an excellent job. I want to thank you, BWIF, for coming out and Kelly coming out. Um, and we want to thank you all for sitting in. And we first, the last but not least, we want to thank our Heavenly Father Amen. who has Amen. given us the opportunity to do what it is that we do. So we hope to see you guys at the uh, premiere on January 24th at the River Oaks Theater or J uh, February 28th. And I just want to let you know something good is about to happen. And until next time, be blessed.